Hello, dear students and researcher. Today, we are going to talk about web tools and softwares, which are also known as the tools to manage and analyze the content. Because being a researcher, what we are working with, actually, these are the contents, the scientific content. We can also, we also uh, know this is as a scholarly literature. So this literature actually is a content in different forms. So when we are writing our papers, we need to manage these contents and also to analyze the data and the contents so that we can have a very good and high quality research papers under our lecture series of research methodology. We have discussed in our previous sessions, writer and authors actually is a creator who is creating a novel and uh, player stories. So a writer should have several characteristics as we discussed, means the deep imagination powers, the trial error, improved kind of set of skills, ability to find the blind spots of the stories. And in this, the strong knowledge of scientific writings. When we say strong knowledge of scientific writings means the, the writers should understand what is a scientific writing, means the philosophy of scientific writings, what components I need, what kind of tools I need. So everything about a scientific writings. What is rising trend actually in the uh, scientific uh, community is right now going on. So along with this, also the authors should know, understand about the important components of a scientific articles and also as we should has the, have the ability to conceptualize the creativity. So along with this, the other abilities which a writer is in need, actually these are the ability to select, understand, evaluate, correlate, and to make conclusions and suggestions. So these are the important topics, important skills, and important abilities our authors should have. So two, as we discussed, are the important things. One, the strong knowledge of the scientific writing, and second, the ability to correlate the authentic results. Because what you are doing, actually, you are uh, going. You are doing a deep dive in the ocean of our knowledge, filled with content, different contents, millions of articles. And from these millions of articles, you have to find out which is best for you. Means which is based on the rising trend, on the current trend, and on the basic. Uh, requirements of what you are going to present in your conclusions and suggestions. So two important things means the strong knowledge of scientific writings and second, the ability to correlate the authentic results. Actually, these also related to the web tools because web tools are also known as the important ingredients for our researchers. I mean, a researcher is going to write a story. So this story needs several steps, for example, the first, what, the first most important kind of tools the uh, an author is required is, is looking for are the search engines or research tools, because these tools tell us what is the rising trend right now in the world. Means what what is going on in the world, what the research community is working on this, what the research community is looking for, what is the demand actually, so that an author can provide a supply, as it is a demand and supply rules in the management. The second important tool which uh, an author is uh, in need is the content enrichment tools. So why the content enrichment tools is, are, are required? You know, when an uh, author is creating a story, this story on the start is a concept because you are going to conceptualize the creativity and your creativity is in a kind of short stories then you are going to sectionize it means in different sections, in different headings, in different protocols. With these different protocols, then you are going to fill all these headings. So you need to understand how you can enrich your contents. Sometimes as, a, as an aspiring researcher or a young researcher or a researcher at the early career stage, they fail to enrich their articles, means to transform their articles from 1,000 words to 3,000 or 4,000 words to make a comprehensive articles to explain all the uh, sections of the stories uh, well, and also to avoid the repetitions of the using some phrases and words. So they need content enrichment tools so that they can enhance the quality of their contents. They can improve the quality of their contents. 
The third most important thing is the papers downloading tools where you can download the papers means uh, every researcher actually knows it means, for example, where to find out the search the papers when they find, you find these papers, then you have to download it. Mostly these uh, downloading, we will discuss it. The mostly these downloading is uh, paid and but every university has uh, subscriptions for this and you can use the university libraries to download the papers but some websites are also available which are providing these uh, downloading the papers uh, for free and the next important things you need actually is the formatting and content analysis tools these are the tools which are required to make a good presentation of your articles to arrange the bibliographies to arrange the to to transform your articles into for example you know good uh, presentations the good headings the good arrangements and also then you have to uh, use the uh, publishing product, uh, the platforms. It means your article is published in the journals, so what's next? So you have to share and discuss your research with the scientific community to understand the flaws too and find out the blind spot stills because you are improving your research. For example, the first paper you have published is not so much high qualitative, but when you share it with the scientific community, you understand the blind spot more because the, uh, the research communities find out it are the productive papers are not productive, means important are not important. And when you are looking, when your paper is becoming not important, then you can work on it to improve the quality of your papers in your next writings. Because the writing is a continuous process throughout your life. That's why you are known as a researcher. So now let's come on the search engines or research tools. Search engines actually are the tools which tell us what to publish. When we say what to publish means you should know what kind of articles. For example, you say my interest area is, for example, in supply chain management. I want to, I know what to publish means I want to publish in a supply chain management or enterprise management or developing the business plans. I have, I, my research area is on this. So I want to publish on this. But it does not mean when we say what to publish, it does not mean which disciplines you want to publish. It means what kind of titles you can uh, give your audience, what kind of content you can provide to your audience, what, uh, what kind of knowledge the audience is looking for, what kind of the questions they are looking for the answers so you can provide the answers. The Google Trend actually is designed for this. Google Trend itself, as they call themselves, means uh, you can use these tools to explore the world, what, what, the, world, what the world is searching right now means, for example, uh, the website is trends.google.com and there is a uh, section, for example, uh, they mentioned themselves is a Miss Earth Vietnam 2023 and you can explore it in the Vietnam. But so we go for, for example, a business plan, a keywords, because there you can write the keywords of your own choice. When I write a keyword, uh, I'm writing a keyword of the with a business plan. You can see, I can find business plan as a search terms, business plan as a topics, some business planners as a softwares, and also the other uh, related articles. But when we search about the business plans, so this, uh, what we find, we find the interest over the time. Here, you have several options, means you can choose it, for example, the, what is going on uh, in the worldwide, just a minute yeah the you can choose the regions countries for example the worldwide you can choose it for the one day two day one month three months one year throughout life when the google was uh, working <clears throat> and also you can choose the categories and which kind of search you are looking for so default it's about the last day means last day what is happening for example at every hours for example what is happening on the google trend so you see at some times, the trend is very high, mean the interest is very increased. At some times, it is decreased. So you understand that the rising trend about, for example, the business plan. When you are searching a word, always choose a word, which is usually is at rising trend of 100 or above the 50, because these are the regularly searched keywords. So when we go down to this uh, search, because again, our trend is the same on the business plans, we find out which countries are searching more about these keywords. The, for example, last day, you can choose the duration of your times. Also, you can specify the regions. You can find out what countries the, they are, they are uh, searching the keywords. So understanding this, 
we go further down on this, we find out some related topics and also some related queries. Here you see the all these things, they have a kind of the tags, means breakouts. Breakout means the Google Trend could not uh, analyze, means could not identify what kind of popularity is. It means it's a highly uh, searched keywords in that regions. So when we see the mostly the relating to the business plan, what the people are searching, actually people are searching the feasibility study. People are searching about how to exhibit the marketability of a service. People are uh, searching means which is or who is engaged in providing or rendering services. So you see, for example, the feasibility study is uh, this kind of topics in business plans. These are the rising topics. These are the breakouts. And when you, you choose the different timelines, you can find out the changing trends in different keywords. And by playing with the Google trend, you can identify what is going on right now in the world. So you can plan accordingly your titles or your keywords or your specialties where in deep specialty where you want to work on this. So the second important uh, web tool actually is a data set also developed by the Googles. As its name indicates, it, you can search the data for, by using these tools. For example, uh, I'm searching for example, SMEs, means small medium enterprises, and I see uh, what kind of data set uh, the Google data set is suggesting. I mean, the number of SMEs in the European Union, so number of SMEs worldwide in Germany, in UK. So any kind of keywords you put there, you can find out the related data sets, means the all uh, statistics which has already been uh, uploaded in the collected by the researchers or the organizations or the NGOs around the world. So you can use these data for your, uh, for analyzing and improving your papers. So we see here, the data is provided, for example, number of SMEs worldwide by regions uh, from 2000 to 2021, means the last 21 years, what, what is being searched, means it's saying that it, there uh, were estimated to be approximately 332 million SMEs worldwide. So even you can uh, analyze these details by the several countries, and even you can write an article, it means in last 10 years, the which regions, the Asia, which continents, which is sub regions like South Asia, Southeast Asia, Middle East, Central Asia, who, who is increasing in the developing of the SMEs. So uh, you can find out uh, novel pieces of knowledge by using these data sets. The another <clears throat> specific tool uh, which can tell you about uh, what is going on, for example, what kind of papers are being published around the world on specific topic is the Google Scholars. The Google Scholars, you can, uh, again, the, you can go to the scholar.google.com and on Google Scholars, you can write down uh, an RT, uh, uh, keywords. For example, as I wrote here, the enterprise management models. Why I'm using the different, different words, actually I'm trying to understand and compile the different business related keywords, their trends. So enterprise management models. You see, uh, the Google is giving us about 5,790,000 results on the enterprise management models with different topics means. You can sort out these things uh, based on the years, the dates also you can separate for examples uh, based on some uh, type of the articles so what we see here these are the scholarly articles means published by some prestigious journals indexed by the googles and their metadata is registered so in every example for example this is a one article second article third and fourth what we see every uh, article is having a title here the names of the authors the journal name, years, and the publishers, for example, which company, which publishers uh, is publishing this. Also some short uh, specific keyword related, uh, you can say a kind of descriptions. And then you, we have several, some small options means cited by how much, how to cite these articles. If you click here, you will find out the different versions of the citations, for example, which you can use in your own articles. And also how many people have cited this and some also related articles. So if we go here using this, for example, related articles, we find out the related articles uh, with the first article uh, regarding the enterprise management model. And we find some several related articles on this. 
And if we choose one articles, for example, the enterprise man knowledge management uh, model based on China's practice and case study, so we find out the so that links direct us to the original link of the papers, because the Google Scholar actually is gathering is crawling the metadata. It is not uploading or it's not providing you the papers. When you click on the articles, the re data retrieved from the Google Scholars, you will uh, reach to the direct uh, the main website, main source of the articles, which is the science direct here. Means because the article was published by the computers in human behavior. Uh, and uh, the company Elsevier's. So we will find out some basic information of the articles, means an abstract, some highlights. Uh, reading the abstract, reading the highlights, you can choose. Also studying the citations means how popular the article is. Uh, you can uh, make decisions, means you want to use these articles for your research or not, or either this article is interesting for your uh, ongoing research or not. If it is ongoing, it is interesting for you, you have to download these articles to study in details. And if not, you can leave it here and you can go for another articles. So here we see the article is published in journals published by the Elsevier. So this size direct actually is also uh, Elsevier specific database. So we can, we can find out on several articles directly from the science direct it means we do not need to go to the uh, Google scholars, but the Google scholars will give us the data from all the databases, but science direct is only the database which have the articles uh, submitted inside the uh, science direct. So the from Google scholars also you can use the help and also from the science direct. Here you can uh, find out the articles with using the keywords or even the book titles, or even if you know some uh, famous scientist in the world, so researcher in the world, you can find out their own articles published on the science directs. We have another uh, search engines, it's known as the science space, means the science space, the recently developed based on the artificial intelligence, which is uh, actually uh, automatically is telling, means what you are looking for. It's helping you to make your search uh, easy and you find out the better papers, the good papers, maybe cited papers. You can sort out in different ways. Uh, recently, it has been uh, loved by several uh, millions of the scientists around the world and trusted by several top universities of the uh, Western world. So uh, the another search engine, the scientific search engine, actually is a ProQuest. ProQuest is a kind of library the, of the scholarly uh, journals, scholarly articles. It is also considered as one of the among uh, top five or top 10 library of the world because almost every university, they submit their scholarly work to the ProQuest. And you can find out the specific articles using the specific keywords on the ProQuest. So for example, I wrote the enterprise management on the ProQuest and I find out about half million articles, scholarly uh, journal articles from the ProQuest. Uh, in different countries, in different words, in different timelines. Of course, you can sort out based on several things, means relevance, means dates, means citations, on everything. You can sort out the articles to find out the best articles which you are looking for. For examples, we clicked uh, one articles here, and we find out the first page which is uh, available there. Some articles on ProQuest, they have limited preview available as a full PDF, but some articles, they have the complete view. Those who have the limited preview, you can find out from another article, from, from another source to download their uh, full. Also, there are the suge suggestions. For example, if you have your university library, you can log in through and you can get access uh, the full articles because as I mentioned, the ProQuest or the Science Direct, mostly university, they have the subscriptions. Even you can find out the library instructions of your university, how to download the papers to get access of the full PDFs. So, what uh, the two important things here, one is the DOI, digital object identifier of an article, and also the second important thing, the symbol of the downloadings, where you can click it and you can download the articles. For example, I clicked it and I downloaded this first page, the complete articles. Usually this first page gives you the basic introduction, basic uh, metadata of the articles, abstract and a little introductions. So for details, you have to download. So you can choose the DOI here, and then you can uh, download the articles <clears throat> and you can store it only on your folders and when it is required, you can use this. So when you uh, have uh, written a story, 
then you have to use you have to expand your story so for expanding the story you need content enrichment tools these content enrichment tools for example the one you know, the tool is the content mine the content mine uh, is developed to extract the hundreds of millions of academic literatures it needs some basic uh, computer programming skills. Those who are experts in working in Linux and have some basic skills, they can get the paper easily. They can find out the knowledge. They can use the content mine easily. But those who are not so much experts of using the content mines, they can use the academic phrase bank developed by the Manchester University. This phrase bank is also to expand the story. For example, you are writing a sentence, and uh, in phrase banks, the, uh, the phrase bank is not free. You can point out in three to five dollars, it's a small cost. You can download it, the complete uh, phrase bank. And here, uh, some examples of the phrase banks means, uh, a case study approach was used, chosen, adopted to ensure that, and so it is giving, it is helping you to create the, to expand the uh, story means how you can use several sentences, how you can compile them, how you can write, how, so everything means different, various met, different methods have been utilized or proposed or employed to identify, to capture, to quantify, to my guess, to determine, to investigate. So it depends based on the story what you are going to write. So <clears throat> the, another important tool is, as we discussed, the paper downloading tools. And uh, for paper downloading, first of all, you should have the DOI. What is a DOI? DOI is a digital object identifier, which is a unique identity of every paper. DOI actually is an uh, organization also registered in the US as a not-for-profit organization. The basic purpose of this organization is to, uh, to collect all the scholarly literatures under one platform, so under one metadata. So the, the that's called that's why it is known as the DOI, and uh, we can say it is the largest repository of the world of scholarly literatures and all the kind of literatures because uh, more than seventy five billion literatures they have given a uh, unique identifiers means DOI. Uh, on the website you can put the DOI and you can submit it to resolve a DOI name. And when you put it, you reach the direct source of the articles. So sometimes if you you did not download the articles and you're looking for, uh, but you have these DOI, you can find out the articles easily and then you can utilize it. Some articles, they are free, you can get it, but some articles, they are paid. And you can access these articles by using the uh, institutional libraries or institutional access or the access by your university. Some websites like SciHub is also developed uh, to download the these articles you, uh, before using these websites you should uh, be careful about the laws and regulations of your country of your university of your institutes either the sci hub is permitted to use in these countries if it is permitted yes you can put the doi here and you can click it click it to open and you will find out the complete articles and then you can download it so when you downloaded it then uh, you can uh, download all these articles on the folders and then you can go for the, for example, completing the stories means drafting your first research papers. When you are drafting your first research papers, then the formatting of these articles are the important thing. And of course, also the analyzing tools, we will discuss it. Before going any things, the most important in uh, scientific literature is the plagiarism. <clears throat> plagiarism is, uh, in simple words, you can say it is the copy pasting. You, so copy pasting is not allowed in scholarly literature. So you have to see either the contents you have written is plagiarized or not. Sometimes you are not copy pasting, you are writing a story, but someone have already published in the same literature, in the same writing view. So you should be aware about this. So plagiarism actually is a process to identify who have published in the same way you have written your own story, it means your uh, scientific paper. Some free tools are also available like plagiarism checkers. You can put the plagiarism checkers and you can see the uniqueness of the content you are writing. Also, there is Turnitin, which is regularly used by almost all of the universities and mostly most popular or favorite tools. Uh, even your university also having the subscription of uh, this turn it in so you can access the library for using this uh, 
And uh, if though your content are small, you can use it the plagiarism checker. So I give the example. So the plagiarism checker here, here, for example, you can see, uh, you can put the content here, means they have mentioned just means upload the files or the type or paste your text here. And by pasting text here, you can run the plagiarism checkers and you can find out the uniqueness of the your contents means for example the text are uh, placed here is 100 percent unique there's zero plagiarized content which is done written by myself and you can see the plagiarized plagiarized contents usually less than 10 percent plagiarized plagiarism is accept acceptable for example some general uh, sentences are uh, we are using means as per the statistics of the United Nations or UNESCO or the global organizations, mean global cancer organizations. These, so these are some kind of repetitive sentences. So uh, uh, in scholarly publish publications, these about ten percent, less than ten percent plagiarisms are accepted, but ninety percent of your contents should be unique. And that ten percent or less than ten percent also depend which kind of articles are that it means they are the quoted sentences, they are the uh, specific statements of some organizations, specific report of some organizations, you are reporting the statistics, then it is allowed. Otherwise, your content should be the unique. So in this, you can identify the plagiarisms and then you can even download the plagiarism reports or the same plagiarism reports. And also, uh, when you are writing the article, some journals ask these reports and so you should have the uh, plagiarism reports with you. The next tools which is uh, required to format your bibliographic uh, references, it's also known as a reference manager, is the EntNote, the most favorite web tools, uh, the most favorite uh, softwares which you can download on your uh, computers and you can integrate that uh, EntNote with your uh, words and then you can retrieve the data from the sources like the DOI using DOI and then you can uh, format your research papers easily. The uh, EndNote actually is a reference manager which helps you to uh, format your citations. So you should not waste your time of managing the references, formatting your references, and the EndNote should do all the job. The uh, EndNote needs some basic stuff. It means the same keywords. You can search your titles. You can search with the name of authors. You can search it. But the most easy way is some uh, digital identifiers. For example, DOI. For example, uh, PMICID for those who are uh, working in the medical sciences. So we took the examples of the DOI. If you have a DOI, you can put the DOI and uh, automatically it retrieves the whole data and then you can have access of the whole data. Then you can tags your references mean what kind of tags you want to give for example there are several tags which easily you can manage it means based on the studies sections years whatever you are looking for also uh, all the metadata they have the summary of the abstract and also the references list which you can also study uh, regularly update yourselves and you can sort out all these uh, references based on the libraries you can develop based on your requirements and any types when you are looking for, you can uh, insert these references into your paper. You can also use a simple uh, <clears throat> tutorials of the EndNotes and uh, it tells you everything. It means how to use the EndNotes to format your references. The next analyzing tools are actually the image processing tools. For biologists, for example, the most favorite currently trending software, the web tool is the BioRenders where you can create some interesting and beautiful uh, schematic images. And these images help to uh, understand easily. Also, you can use these images to uh, make your story very clear and also to develop the graphical abstracts. Another software is the image J used by the research communities to uh, use the, uh, for example, microscopic images to edit them to put the graphs on that and the meters and the other stuff which is required to edit the images. And also another is the ink space, which is also again to draw and some to process the images. The recently, uh, the Mindy graph is our online web tools, which is uh, getting so much popularity. You can use it and you can uh, develop your graphical abstracts. 
Also, you can develop the academic posters and it works very fast because it's very easy and simple to use these things. So when you have written your articles, formatted it, submitted it for publications, and it is accepted, then you can use some uh, publishing means the distribution tools. The one of the tool is a Mendeley. It is also a kind of social media where you can create your profiles. You can have the list of your friends, the colleagues. Also, it is also a kind of reference managers where you can search the articles, you can find out, you can do the management because it is also known as a Mendeley reference managers. And it also helps to use to study some basic trends. Another software, another web tool is the research gate where you can create your profiles and you can see the related uh, researchers, also those who have cited you in your papers and you can have several kinds of statistics. Uh, also, it gives you your uh, interest scores, some citations, some actual index, and you can build uh, researcher profiles to share your articles with the research community and also to get advices from the research community. Another very interesting tool, a web tool, is the Academia. Uh, academia, the most important things in Academia is the Academia has some analytical uh, uh, tools for your papers. For example, you have published your papers and uh, it gives you the anal analytics, means your paper has been accessed by using this keyword from these regions by these people. So you can have a comprehensive analysis about your uh, papers, means these papers, means who, is, who, are, who are downloading your papers, who are accessing your papers, how many people they reached your, uh, how many people they reached your papers, but not downloaded your papers. So you can make a uh, future plans uh, based on this. At the end, I'm going to uh, introduce a website. It is called as a scholarly, scholarly.com. The scholarly is a one in all tool uh, platforms for uh, to manage your workflows of everything for your research. Here you can find all kinds of updates, new tools, the edits in the tools, the updates happening on the tools. Even this, uh, you can find out the articles based on several, this is, you can find out the tools based on several things, means you are looking for workflows, you are looking for plannings, you are looking for exploring the research, analyzing the research, documenting the research or publishing tools. So scholarly actually gives you the comprehensive descriptions of all the tools which you need right now to make your papers and to help you to be a good researcher. For further readings, you can read the scientific writing as uh, the book with comprehensive uh, descriptions or writing are scientific paper. This book is available on the uh, Apple Books, uh, Amazon Kindles, and also you can find out some uh, stores near in your country because we are trying to make the distribution uh, make the distributions globally so you can access uh, good thanks if you have any questions you can write on my emails and my maxud uh, com on my website so you can find the details of communicating that also and my maxud at gmail.com have a good time